Well, hello people of the internet. Today I just want to talk about a couple of things I've been thinking about, or at least a thing that I want you to think about. I've been thinking hard about that thing. So the thing I want to talk about today is board game rules and why I believe it would be very helpful for every programmer to learn by writing board game rules. There are an incredible amount of things you learn when you try to put together a board game. The first for me was how to be specific. <laughs> the, the challenges that come up with writing a board game are similar to the challenges that come up with writing code. In fact, you're trying to write code, although there are a couple of differences. The biggest difference is you're not trying to define what people should do in every situation. You're trying to define what they may do, which is slightly different because in practical terms, you're, you're trying to give them the functions to return the list of possible actions that they may take and then let them choose between them, which is slightly different to coding where, of course, you have to do exactly what it says and the program works it through. Now, when I was trying to write the rules for Enchanted Convoy, which is a which is a, a kind of collecting card game for a five by five board where you would play them and try and make a five in a row. I came across a couple of significant issues and some of them were really, really simple. Like take, take this example. Player one receives three cards. Player two receives four cards. Player three receives five cards. Player six receives seven cards. And actually there are only four players, but Imagine you've got this situation in your game where you want to write this in the rules where each player starts with a different number of cards. You might be inclined as, as a programmer to want to write a for loop. Um, in fact, I really was inclined. I desperately wanted to write a for loop. I think I did and then I showed it to my wife who looked at it and went, what does that mean? So the for loop you want to write would be something like this, for each player n around the table, player n receives n plus two cards. Okay. And that feels really clear, really concise, just like, as we say, you know, programming languages are for people to read after all. And when you look at that, the rules are clear, right? You, I don't think any programmer among you will misinterpret it, but anyone who's not a programmer and the majority of games players are not programmers. <laughs> so you then have to try and work out how can I write this in a clear way? And your aim is to keep it concise. And I feel like two lines, like the for loop that you've got there, and, and you're okay, you might be tempted to put the wiggly braces on because programmer. But it doesn't quite work, does it? So you end up writing, and I ended up writing, player two, player one receives three cards, player two receives four cards, and going the long way around. And I realise it's only for four people, and so that's probably why, but what would you do if you had to do that for ten people? Would you try and write it in a for loop? Would you use variables? I found that I couldn't use variables, so there was a lot of constraints pushing me to not use variables in writing the rules. For anyone who's had a go at writing stuff in Maud or in Castle, various specification languages that exist, you, you kind of need that level of precision. But again, people aren't programmers. People, the majority of people aren't programmers. So you're stuck trying to work in English, but you're not just working in English. You're working in every version of English that's spoken, every dialect. Let's face it, people across the pond might understand some words slightly differently. And then, of course, you've got to finish writing all of the rules. And in your aim for conciseness, you find yourself wanting to write functions. And programming, most modern languages don't have the limit that you have to write your function before, the, um, before you call it. So you can throw in a function call and reference a package which explains what that is. And I desperately wanted to use functions. And to do that, you kind of, well, something like functions, you know, this, how this works, and then refer to it throughout the game, throughout your game rules, so that you don't have to write the same thing many, many times. So this leads to, and so often I found dependency cycles. Um, often I said more on those later. 
So you refer to these things and then you'd be like, well, I can't define these things without defining how you move with them or how they relate to some other piece because the core of this piece is how they relate to another piece and that other piece needs to be defined but also it's related to the first. So you, the loops and, and fighting through this is such an experience in building up your problem solving for readable code. Um, obviously, when you finish writing it, you show it to someone. You have to test this because you think you've written it perfectly clearly and you show it to someone. And I often showed it to Tasha first and she would read it and go, what? And even once Tasha was happy with it, I showed it to some other people and they go, what about something else? Something completely unexpected. And, and with Enchanted Convoy, at the same time as making it as a playable board game, so I had to write the rules in English so people could play it. I was also writing it in PHP and JavaScript. So I had a server that was processing how the moves worked, but you had to be able to do the moves in the, uh, in the browser. So I was making it a, a multiplayer online game. And I remember having someone playing the game online and they couldn't work out what they were trying to do. And I felt like it was obvious. In fact, I told them several times, the aim is to make five in a row. And, and lots of people weren't understanding what they were trying to do. Every piece, obviously your, your pieces have a color on them and your opponent's pieces are a different color. This was how I worked it. Um, but people couldn't see the color. I'd put it as a ring around the piece and people just didn't notice it. And that one took me a long time to find out why it was people didn't know what they were doing. I was actually watching someone play and they're like, what am I trying to do? And I'm like, trying to make five in a row. And they still couldn't understand because they thought all the pieces were the same color, would belong to the same player. So in the end, I actually had to make the color a bigger part of the piece to make it absolutely clear that this was whose piece it was. When you write, uh, when you're trying to write board game rules, you have a, a challenge that you don't have when you're writing code, which is if the rules look long, people don't read them. Now, while that's technically true when you write code, if the code is really long, no one's going to read the whole thing. People just try and find the, but if you make an API, that's okay. And the computer can handle it and it's fine. Everyone needs to be able to read the rules. And that is different to code because with code, you know, two or three maintainers can work on the same piece section of code. And, and as long as they out expose a reasonably small API, most people don't need to look inside it. Right? you just, okay, well, I can do that. And good, good. As long as it's abstracted pretty well, right? <laughs> easier said than done, but it, it can be. Every single person who is going to play your game needs to be able to read the rules, or at least one person in every single house needs to read the rules, understand them, and everyone interprets things differently. You're aiming, you have to, if you want people to read these rules, they cannot be too long. I mean, yeah, there are plenty of people probably like me, who don't mind reading three or four pages of rules. I don't even mind reading eight pages of rules if I think that the game is good. But plenty of people have put off at that. So you need to keep the rules as short as possible. You've got to find every way you can of cutting things out, possibly take, changing the rules so that they don't take up as much space because your priority is getting people playing. And as long as it leads to a similarly interesting game, that shouldn't be a problem. And then you've got to choose which rules are the more important or some rules are difficult to remember. So you end up creating crib sheets to try and make sure that people can get to them. But conciseness wins in so many ways. You really have to try and say as much as you can in as few words as possible. And that will teach you a lot. May not necessarily teach you a ton of coding, but it will teach you a lot. The rules need to be clear. They need to be unambiguous. 
Now, English as a language is naturally ambiguous. In fact, every language is ambiguous. That's how we survive, you know? You've got to choose how ambiguous you're going to be or how much flexibility you want in the rules. Can people change things around a bit? I often quite like to make games that explore a mechanic, which, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the Mario system, as it were, where you, the scheme by which Nintendo have built most of their games and their levels, and, and there are plenty of YouTube videos talking about that, but the basic idea is you explore a single mechanic. And so I like the idea of being able to make rules that you can play with, where you change them and you see how the game varies under changed, slightly adapted rules. Um, and it's well worth, if you start making a game, trying to do that, to play with rules and see what differences they make on how people play strategically. So I hope you find this helpful. This is a, my case for writing board games as a programmer, as a learning experience for every programmer. You will learn about writing concise documentation because you can't avoid it. You will learn about keeping your language precise. You will learn so much about dependency management in rules and how to make stuff readable to a large audience. You'll, you'll learn some mechanic stuff as well in how you define good, clear mechanics. So go for it. Try writing board game rules. Make up a board game or just write the, board, the rules out for a game you already know and love to play. See if you can do it in, in fewer pages or fewer words than the people who made the game did. You might be surprised, it's, uh, <laughs> it's harder than it looks. You have just watched an episode of Coded Convoy. I release these every so often, I have no idea how often. And so, if you want to know when I release a new thing, I recommend subscribing. Um, then you'll find out, right? Ciao for now.